penultimate round of the Women's Six Nations and after the disappointment of conceding over 50 points against England, Wales are eager to get their campaign back on track. But it's a big ask against France. Le Bleu have won their opening three matches. Victory today would set up a Grand Slam title decider against England next weekend. More than 20,000 tickets have been sold for this one in Grenoble. A hostile, intimidating place to go, said Wales back rower Sean Ed Harris this week. So can the Welsh Dragons handle the heat? Why do we try? Good afternoon. Wales finished their Six Nations campaign with two away trips. Italy next weekend, but first up, it's France in Grenoble. Our team is ready, rearing to go out there, as are we here in studio. I'm joined by former Wales international Philippa Tutiat and present Wales international Jazz Joyce. Not involved in this campaign due to ripping it up on the seven circuits with Team GB. It's going very well at the moment, Jazz. Yeah, unfortunately not to be involved in this year's Six Nations. Um, Duties are with sevens this year, so yeah, just come back off a bronze medal win in uh, Hong Kong sevens, so first medal that Great Britain has, has ever won, so fantastic opportunity for us and achievement for, for all of us out there. Gutted, obviously, not to be involved in a Six Nations campaign, but great opportunity for all of the girls coming through and what better way to do it in a stadium full of 20,000 French fans. <laughs> and an opportunity for us to see that brilliant try against Ireland last <laughs> campaign as well. Right then, back to this afternoon. And I guess for Wales, after a great start to their campaign, it's about building on that promising opening 30 minutes against England last weekend. Yeah, it certainly is. And I think it's it's a sign of the professionalism now that the team has had the opportunity to really analyse that game and take away so many positives. Because, yes, the scoreline wasn't where we wanted it to be, but that first 30 minutes, like you say, they hustled England. But now the progression for them is they've got to turn that pressure into points. Yeah, because that's what the top teams do, isn't it? When they're in that red zone, they come away with points. And France will do that this afternoon. Yeah, absolutely. England were clinical um, in the outside edges against Wales and they took the momentum and then took it all the way through to, to the end of the, the 80 minutes. So Wales need to control France's momentum and yeah, take it away from them to, to get the win today. Right there. OK, well, I think we're going to go to Grenoble and France because our reporter Alexandra Richards is out there and she's been talking to Wales head coach Johan Cunningham. Johan, you've made seven changes to the starting lineup today. Just talk us through your thoughts behind the team selection. Yeah, well, it's a great opportunity for players to um, put their hands up. Um, a lot of players have been patient and worked extremely hard in our training environment and also impacted the game well in the first three rounds. So we want to give an opportunity today It's a tough French opposition. More than 20,000 fans expected in this stadium today. What have you been doing with the players this week to prepare them for the level of noise? Yeah, well, we've had a lot of loud music in our training environment. Um, trying to make it difficult, you know, it's going to be a test for our senses today, you know, with, with noise, ref, crowd, so we're looking forward to it, it's going to be brilliant. And Scotland's result yesterday means a point today would guarantee that third place position. Have you spoken about that before the game? Does it change anything for you today? Well, tries are important, um, so potentially we might take some opportunity to, to go after the tries instead of maybe taking, taking a shot at post, but we'll see how the game goes. Best of luck today, Johan, thanks for your time. Yes, thanks. Yeah, and that third place position, so important because it would mean that Wales would play in the top tier of a new women's competition in the autumn. Well, as we hear there from Johan Cunningham, quite a few changes, seven to his side, but one who stays a constant, Eleanor Snowsill, as that fly half. And she reaches a very special milestone today. 75th cap. Um... Yeah, I didn't think I'd sort of make it to 75, but I guess the support of my family has helped me a lot to get here. It's been great. It's been probably quite a unique experience to be towards the mature end of my career, but then turning professional. Um, I'm just really looking forward to taking to the field with the girls. That is wonderful! 
England are probably the best team in the world, one of the best teams in the world, and they're going to continue pushing that bar higher and higher. So, um, you know, we're not under any illusions. We're, we're going to continue working very hard, looking at ourselves. Um, we are very happy with how the start of the tournament has gone, but that's now in the past, and, and we're now focused on the next game. France away is probably one of the biggest events of the Six Nations, um, has been historically. Um, they love their rugby out there and they, they come to support in thousands. Um, and it's a very noisy crowd, there's a great atmosphere. Um, so I think just making sure that maybe the players who are new into the squad are prepared for that and walking out here in that wall of noise come at you. Little things like you might not be able to communicate 10 metres away like you normally ca can do. You have to come tighter together. So just as long as you're prepared for it, then, you know, you'll be ready for it. Preparation key, ever the professional. Elena Snow still focused, let's put it like that. But what's the snowy, as you call her, like off the pitch? Yeah, like you said, she is very focused, very stern on the pitch. And that's exactly what you want from, from a player of her experience and also a 10. But... Off the pitch, she's a joker, she's fun, she's a great person to have in and around camp. So, yeah, very different off the pitch. And it feels like she's been around forever, doesn't it? Yeah. Ten years, she has weathered the storm, hasn't she? Oh, gosh, yeah. You think multiple World Cups, Six Nations, she was at the Commonwealth Games with the Sevens. So she's been there, seen it, done it. But, you know, through the last management, she was actually thinking of stepping away from rugby. She had a bit of a tough time with it. But it was actually credit to her club coach at Bristol, Dave Ward. He really helped her to, to make that transition, change her play a little bit, but find the love for the game again. So I think that was key in the fact that she's gone on and she's had this longevity of a career. She has been there forever. Right then, let's talk about France and their danger women. Where do you start? They are everywhere. Yeah, they really are. I mean, that's why they're number three in the world. But I want to highlight this centre here, number 12, Gabrielle Vernier. She is absolutely fantastic. One of the standout performers in the World Cup. And in this Six Nations, she has just kicked on again. She's that modern 12 that's happy to slot in, slot in as fly half and play the ball around. But defensively, she's going to be lining up against Clakey George. We normally see at 10. She's starting at 12. Exciting to see how that goes. But Clakey George needs to use her feet because Gabrielle Vernier will line her up and she puts in huge hits. So she's going to be key for France today. It's a big day for Abby Constable as well. First start and what a place to have that first start. Is it sink or swim? Well, fantastic for Abby Constable. She, she's getting her first cap in a stadium that's going to be full of full of fans, 20,000. Yeah, it is. Sink or swim. And the front row for Wales have, have been playing very, very well. So she's got big shoes to fill. But look, I'm really excited to see her go. New cap. She's, she's got nothing to lose. So, yeah, go get it. It just shows the depth that Wales have now, that they are experimenting with that front row. Yeah, it shows depth. We've also got Kate Williams is now getting her first start, so a bit of depth in the back row too. And that's going to be key for Wales, especially if they're aiming top-tier rugby, like you say, women's XV. They need a big squad of players to compete with the best in the world. Does this feel like the right game as well? Because it's a tough one straight after England. Yeah, yeah, I think so. You know, they were trialled, they were tested against England. How much have they learned from that? Because now this is the second toughest chance for them. Well, last time out, France were 33-5 winners over Wales in Cardiff. They haven't lost to Wales since 2016. Does that change today? Let's join our commentary team, former Wales captain Rachel Taylor and Gareth Fisoen. Good afternoon. Welcome to the start of this Alps in Grenoble. And one of the true wonders of sport, a French home game in the women's Six Nations. There is nothing quite like this. Intimidating, perhaps overwhelming, all-consuming. The senses are buzzing here. It's a wonderful atmosphere. And it will just improve with the anthems.
the scene is set and the challenge is enormous for Wales France are stacked there's depth there's experience front row all play for Bordeaux led by Lot Foriana Man Energy is an outstanding eight speaking of quality few were better in the world than Vernier at 12 and the back three of Jorens, Boulard and Bane can certainly mortar. It's full of depth, full of experience, with a couple of young charges as well. As for Wales, where Johan Cunningham's big call in the front row, completely fresh, three of Phillips, Hale and Abby Constable. One change the back row, Kate Williams winning her first start at seven. Fionn Lewis at nine. The ball spin skills of Saki George will be an asset at 12, out wide. Carlos Williams Morris returns after missing the England game. Look at that bench. The front row in particular has gone very well for Wales in the campaign. And the bomb squad will certainly come on deep into the second half. Well, Rachel Taylor with me, Rachel. This is nothing new, this kind of atmosphere here for an away team in France it's rather special and if you're not used to it like some of these young Wales players it, it probably will be rather overwhelming yeah it's got potential to be hasn't it I mean this crowd is amazing this stadium is built it's like an echo chamber in here you know everything is is uh, exaggerated and magnified but I mean what an experience what an amazing moment for you know for Abby Constable to be out here in, in her first cap if you're going to do it this is how you want to get one big moment for that young woman playing at home a number of Grenoble individuals here Shambon the scrum half big responsibility on her shoulders but much of today's celebration will be about the the woman holding the ball on the center spot Jesse Tremoulier one of the greats of international rugby her final home game in France France Aiming for a grand slam showdown against England. And the nerves get to Wales. And first touch by Kate Williams is a knock on. Yeah, and it's, it's exactly that moment, isn't it? Huge pressure, huge noise, you know, everything's everything's exaggerated, balls up in the air and Obviously, you want to get your first touch, you want to get your hands on the ball early, but just a, a bit of an error there from Kate Williams. She'll want to forget about that, put that behind her, try and get into the game as quick as she can now. She's got an opportunity from scrum to get straight in from a defensive side. Ménagé to Chambon, Prémoulier, Fionn Lewis, which gets away to Hermé, Ménagé! The perfect start in Grenoble. Roma Menage, one of the quality players. And there are many, many quality players in this French lineup. First scrum, down the blind side, and Menage completes the job. One minute played. France five, Wales nil. It's just great support lines, isn't it? As soon as that half break is made, Herme is there running that line, and then you are not stopping Menage from that far out. She is an incredible athlete and such a powerful runner of the ball. Not even looking for space in that scenario. She's happy to carry straight over. This elder statement. Oh, this elder state person would have been here time and time again. Nothing will face Jessie Tremoulier. And she will look to add the extras. Casual style. But it flops over. And the locals 
get exactly what they crave. Yeah, they do, and it's, it was a good try, wasn't it? The platform was set. You know, whether they've looked at Wales's blindside defence, seemed like that was a pre-planned opportunity for them, but Wales got to get straight back in this game now. If they can get on the scoreboard next, or at least get something good territory, good field position, just settle those nerves. Uh, the ball is allowed to bounce by Courtney Kate and former Wales skipper Rachel Taylor just punches the air in frustration because things are just not going the way of Johan Cunningham's women right now. No, it just it's just that field position, you know, you can see the point. The next thing you want to do is be in the opposition half for a little bit of time. And they've got the opportunity now, though, to go line out, and it's just about possession and keeping ball. You have to be really careful in their kicking game today. If they kick to this back three, you know, it's so important that they find grass or, or get the ball off the pitch. First kick by Ellen Snowsell. It's a loose kick. Nerves are jangling. Knock on off kickoff. Drop balls. Bounce, ba balls being allowed to bounce. And an early try conceded. Not the start they would have wanted. No, I think I'm going to stop speaking. <laughs> <laughs> to the tail they go, beautifully taken by Scudero, the blind side, so sharp, right at the tail of the driving mall, encouraged by the supporters, Vernier, Menager, twin sister of the try scorer, Tremoulier wants it, advantage being played, Keith has to get the skates on, and she was being hunted by Bane, but we'll go back for the penalty. Yeah, good initial defence, I thought, there from the from the mall, from the forwards. From Wales just keeping them out, keeping them at bay. I think it's just that back line creeping offside to force the penalty, but that's Tremillier's expertise there, the, the calmness and the time on the ball that she has. She's got the ability to spot that space in the backfield and just put one through. You know, it's a free shot, that penalty's come in, it's an opportunity to score. Jesse Trumoulier, player of the decade, according to World Rugby. Last decade, final season, final home game. She was given such a warm welcome when she entered the field alone, ahead of her teammates, and I got of world rugby, an icon of French sports. And she is expected to dot this one over and make it tenor. No drama, tenor. I think it's worrying for Wales in the early signs, isn't it? Just how calm and how relaxed she looks playing today. Uh, she seems very self-assured, just leading the leading the backs into their moves, into their getting into their rhythm. Same with the forwards around the area of the ruck, and just seems very, very comfortable kicking at goal. Now we're just pausing for one of the assistant referees to get her microphone sorted. That might well be what's needed from a Wales point of view because all of a sudden people can just stop, take a breath and try and get back into this match. Keat looking to counter-attack, first possession of the game for Wales. For Jan Lewis, Keris Hale starting today. Beth Ann Lewis in midfield. Wales just want the ball. Snow Silt, Hannah Jones looking to drift outside the defence of Escudero. 
Snow Sale spots the gap. Oh, she was half through, no support, and Fleming, fair play to her, was going backwards, and then she did accelerate into the tackle. Clicky George, Neumann, lost, turnover, Tremoulier, Kate Williams, turned the ball over, but it was a high shot, and another penalty for France. Yeah, that's unfortunate, just opportunity for France to relieve the pressure there, gone through six, seven phases of Wales play, managing to keep ball, nice ball movement from Wales, going from one side of the pitch to the other, it's probably just like you said, that organisation, isn't it, running onto the ball, making sure they're at, at getting their depth so that they are giving themselves the best opportunity to attack. It's just frustrating that it's it's a penalty. It just takes all the pressure off France and they get field position again. Yeah. No complaints, really, with that call. History favours the side in blue. Wales have never won in France. They've only once scored more than seven points. And this is Tremoulier. Pushing defenders out the way. They're looking so sharp and threatening through Bane on one wing. And then it's Boulard on the other, the fullback. Tremoulier spots her main. She waits for the ball, the open side, and she's away. Brilliant, brilliant finish by her main. The kick was on a plate for her, but she had all the work to do. And Gael Hermé scored France's second, and we've only played less than 10 minutes here at the starters out. Yeah, probably can't pick it up on the cameras, but Hermé was out here probably two or three phases prior to that, literally screaming, almost bent over, trying to get that message across that that crossfield kick was on. And like you said, what a pinpoint kick. But she's got so much to do still from there. She's got the speed to take on the winger on the outside and then just powers herself through. But what great vision. And like you said, accuracy on that kick. Spot on. It's so loud here. And then the noise, if the patterns to be followed, will just dip and drop and dissipate completely. For Tremoulier to add the extras. Such a lazy style. No effort whatsoever. And it's no sweat here for the French. Immaculate so far. 17 0 and. Williams Morris beaten by the open side, Rachel. Yeah, they just look they just look in the zone, don't they? Every single one of the French players just looks really on it at the moment. They just seem really intent on making a statement in this first 20 minutes. Must have seen how encouraged Wales were from that first half performance against England. They just don't want to have any risks here, France. It's Courtney Keat. Fionn Lewis got the call, the numbers were the other way, so Bethan Lewis will drag the defender and France have reorganised, the Wales keep going the same direction. Thank you, George. George Evans on the standout performers for Wales so far in this Six Nations campaign. Caris Phillips, the former skipper. Hannah Jones, was no crossing. Referee allows that to play. Evans can play in the back row and lock. Snow cell flat pass to Abby Fleming. Thank you, George. She did very well there. Wouldn't have been too grateful for that pass. No, it's just that. Manages to avoid the first defender, but unfortunately steps back into the other. There's some ferocious tackling coming from the French defence at the moment. They're really managing to spot who those Wales ball carriers are and just come out, 
Don't know whether Wales just might want to get a little bit deeper, just start scanning, see if there's any spaces in this French defence. Beth and Lewis, uh, looks to me like Keris Hale has taken a knock and she rather gingerly gets back on her feet. So Fionn Lewis sensibly goes for the kick, out in the full. Second time Wales have done that. Yeah, for me, I think right idea, like you said, probably just ran out of bodies there for a certain period, wasn't there, of the carry-in and that like, ferocious defence from France. So it's a good opportunity when you hit that 15-metre channel, if you've got that ruck set up, it's a, a, a good chance to do that box kick, not necessarily one that you want to you wanna put too much length on, it's probably one that you want to try and get up in the air and compete with, and the fans are definitely <laughs> enjoying the first 15 minutes of this game. A Mexican wave in many a, a sporting arena is seen as a... An indication that the supporters have lost interest in the match. I don't think that's the case here, is it? No, I think you know we were lucky enough to be part of the build-up, weren't we, pre-match? And you know this this stadium's been literally jumping probably for the last hour, hour and a half. So they're definitely trying to make the day of it. It's brilliant, and as I said, it's not aggressive or intimidating. It's just all over you you cannot escape it in any way whatsoever yeah look it like they just do it so well don't they noise fans families you know people appreciating the game and at the moment it's a great spectacle Remoulier forwards in midfield Vernier oh that's a delicate chip could have gone anywhere and eventually it's knocked on and accidental offside but the variation there from the French Gabriel Vernier, arguably the best player in the world right now. Can play 10, and that was just something a little bit different. It's just really smart, isn't it? Notices that line speed, you know, particularly off a line out. See if that uh, defensive team puts a really hard pressure on the line speed. They're normally a bit of a disconnect between them and the backfield, so that space middle uh, middle of the pitch opens up, and then it's all about the bounce of the ball. I think it's Escudo tries to catch one behind the back, which would have been pretty impressive, but um, just forces a penalty though. So Wales will be pleased to have some possession in this part of the pitch. Fionn Lewis. Another penalty. What's going on here, Rachel? Why is why is nothing working from a Wales point of view? Yeah, look, I think you know France have got one of the best defenses in the women's game at the moment, and arguably the men's game. Um, for me, it's probably it's just the it's the moment. It's how the game started. Uh, those, you know, having to concede early. Wales just need to almost have a breather, have a calm down. Like you said, that 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 pause earlier, just a chance to breathe, try and keep their hands on the ball, and then when they run out of ideas, it's about probably kicking a little bit smarter. You know, we've seen one go out in the full. We've seen one straight to the to the wing. You know, we just we just need to find grass, try and turn this French back three or at least try and put them in a difficult position of the pitch. Tremolier, Fuller, Jorens, she's got support, Banay, bow, great tackle by Lisa Neumann. It was Banay against Neumann, uh-oh. And there were so many players coming back, and Sean and Harris takes one for the team, really. And Wales are down to 14 women. Yeah, not a lot you can do there. As a back row, you're always going to try and flirt with uh, what's what's legally uh, correct. But um, I think if they'd managed to get that pass away, it was probably a certain try. But it puts puts this Welsh pack in a really difficult position now, having to defend another line-out. But great cover tackle to prevent the try in the beginning. Not straight the call. It's 
a little look, isn't it? I'm so shy. Back, back to the assistant referee today. Just double checking if they were sure about that. I think that's the first unforced error for France so far in an immaculate opening 17 minutes. It's deafening here in Grenoble. This will be an interesting one because I think Williams Morris has gone onto the flank, leaving Eleanor Snowzill in the blind side where they look to exit. Bethan Lewis did very well. Just gained her side a few valuable ex extra seconds, sucked in a couple of defenders, and now the challenging work of opening up the angles to get the exit. Snow Sill, snap kick by her. As a result, it's France ball deep in to red 22. Worth remembering that this French side, not the complete makeup, but the French team six months ago were one penalty miss away from a World Cup final. Third in the world. A quality side. Packed not only with big thumping forwards, but pace to burn out wide. So sharp. Pops out, Vernier, Tremoulier, Boulard controls it football style. Now Keat gets it. Unexpected opportunity for Wales. Bethan Lewis into the physical nature of the game. George Evans, good carry by her. Snow Cell finds greenery. Now, what will Boulard do there? Well, there's your answer. Yeah, that's, that's exactly what Wales need to do. There was a couple of bits in that. Obviously fortunate enough to get that turnover in the first place, but it's that line of Bethan Lewis that, that comes like, they've already made that bust in the French defence and they carry again and they try and just make little dents. There's another carry and then it's just a really smart kick, kicking on the front foot. Here we, yeah. It was Keith and then Bethan Lewis with the carry. And Emily Boulard. Was slightly annoyed with herself. So, end of the opening quarter. What will be the messaging coming on from a friend's point of view and from the touchline from Johan Cunningham and his coaching staff? Yeah, look, I think France have looked really dangerous, haven't they? Especially probably in that transition part of the game they look like they're very comfortable throwing the ball out wide and they're definitely going to have a go I think for me Wales have looked strong in certain areas when they're getting those sort of one out carries but it's just a little bit readable I think they're going to have to mix the variety up around the ruck play and almost as we saw in that example just force this back three force this defensive line from France to do something different and then when they get an opportunity they've got to go for it they've got to be brave they've got to have a crack and they've got a midfield Sent a scrum to do exactly that now. I'm guessing Wales will go right here. Because if the camera pans back, they don't have a single player to the left, despite there being an open side to the left. So here they go right. Fion Lewis, 14 players. Snow Cell. She was hinting that the passing side was going to come. Kate Williams, first start for her. Took a punted play for Wales. Came all the way back from New Zealand. Hale took an early bump herself. She's slightly isolated. Good clear out by Bethan Lewis there. Williams again. Wales' best attack. And boy, do they need something. And thank you, George. On the miracle angle. Couldn't hold on to the ball. Vernier. Mm. 
France just looking at tidy up the racket area get the clearance away which they do let's go pitch side and join Alexander Richards thanks go yeah I'm with Alicia Butchers Alicia not the start you would have wanted to this game no it's not but we knew coming to France was gonna be a very difficult task for us and they've really brought us the first brought it to us the first 20 minutes we're just hoping now the girls can retaliate and get some points on the board what do you need to do to try and get into this game I think we just need to go back to what we're really good our rumble game and our scrum has been really effective for us the Six Nations so we start bringing that back into the game a little bit more hopefully we can get a foothold in this game and get some more points on the board Alicia thanks very much for your time thank you very much well they could do with Alicia, uh, Alicia Butchers couldn't they yeah she's a brilliant player it's always pleasing to see you know, as the Six Nations has progressed, just her uh, return to play. You know, we've seen her out running and passing and the warm-up today as well, so hopefully she'll be back fairly soon. Clicky George. She was first distributor there. Wales have two ballers at 10 and 12. But they need the grunt and the shunt of the likes of Beth and Lewis, and now they've lost their shape. Yeah, it's interesting to hear Alicia Butchers talk about the rumble game, isn't it? You know, I wonder what that what that means to this Welsh team. But they do seem to be getting go forward when they use their pods. It's just the variety. And I think, you know, we saw that hard line from Flaky George earlier. They have to mix that variety in to create opportunities. It's just the, the final part of that execution that's just lacking at the moment for Wales. A couple of players carrying a couple of knocks them. And Beth Andy was one of them. And she's overrun her support and she could be isolated. Fionn Lewis, yeah, had to get her hands in there. And as is so often the case, Bethan Lewis made the break, but it counted against the team. Meanwhile, George Evans, Caris Phillips and Bethan Lewis are down. And the shot concentrated on Bethan Lewis, but off camera, George Evans is in some pain. Yeah, I think it just goes to show just the, the amount of physicality that this French defence are bringing at the moment you know the the Welsh players they're running with intent they want to carry they're just not winning that collision and France far more dominant in that area at the moment I think that's Falani's potentially second turnover in five minutes you know she's she's being really smart at which ones she goes for at the breakdown Here's the injury. Oh, here's the carry. And yeah, just a warning to Carlos Phillips for that clear out on Chambon. Just a ticking off. Yeah, I think. Look, it seems that the Wales are losing that. That they've got a disconnect, haven't they, between the ball carrier and those that are cleaning the cleaning the um, defender out. They just. Probably just need to have a little bit more focus over the next five, ten minutes, just on speed of ruck. You know, they look really dangerous, Wales, when they can go through the phases and keep that high tempo ball. It's just, you know, it's a huge effort and a huge ask against such a good defence. Good that George Evans is back up. Wales are looking light at lock. Number of injuries. Gwen Crabbe being one, Natalia John being the other. And yet, Keris Hale, who took a bump in the opening 10 minutes, hasn't looked right since. And sensibly, she departs. That's the tackle on Evans. Not a bad replacement on she's having the tournament of her life isn't she it's number 18 you can just see in the shot there Cecilia to it below two on as a replacement given a breather today but Wales need all the reinforcement that they can have they weren't ready for that line at either but France have their tails up oh wow what a beautiful break and they're away what a finish your ends ghosting through the Wales defense. She's done it again. 
She cannot sc stop scoring tries in this competition. Third try conceded by Wales. And they are falling off first-time tackles and being punished for it. Yes. It's clear that France want to play at a higher level of speed of this game. They want to increase the tempo. Wales were not ready, not defensively set from that line out. Just such a balanced athlete. Ball in two hands, transfers. It's a lovely in and out line. Melissa Llorens for the try. Play the match last week. Beautiful finish this week. And if the opening 25 minutes is to be repeated, this conversion shouldn't be an issue either. Indeed it's not. France are up to 24. And Wales need to get back to 15 players ASAP. great use of a blind side winger isn't it just always have those messages from coaches get yourself get you know ball in hand find moments in the game where you can make a, an, a you know an impact not just out on the wing and just really really smart from them at using that additional player having conceded conceded that try with it with the absence of Sean Ed, so Wales will be pleased to be back to 15. Poulard. Strange old kick. Snow Sill. Looked up. Thinking of the 50 22. Chamoulier has to scramble across. That's charged down. They're all on side. Fionn Lewis. She goes. Thank you, George. Hospital pass. Could work for Wales. Ball in one hand. Use it. Harris Phillips. No, 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 no. Was there at the Knoll in 2016 when Wales last beast France? As was this woman. And the snow sill. Nice from Wales. Keats. She is rough handled right on the far touch line but stays in field. George Evans plays scrum half. Sean and Harris. They're not getting much change of the defence, Rachel. No, it's it's good line speed. Here she is again, triple lotto, and gets the ball away to Fleming. Impact needed. Impact Seven. given. Once Seven again, one. it's Cecilia Tripolotto. Is there anything this young woman cannot do? No, she's having a, a great impact on this game. And for me, it's just it's just these little movements of the ball that are going to help. You know, we saw Shaky George take a huge hit earlier, but it's the quick hands that releases somebody else on the outside. And that's what they're doing again through the forwards. And just just deserved that for me. And let's see if they can get take an opportunity now when they've good kick just outside the five meter line. Chance for the Welsh forwards. Wales would have been very happy with the opening 30 against England. Is that a complete contrast here in Grenoble? Back for footing it for 28 minutes, loose line outs. Tremoulier, watch out. This is what, what France like to do counter attack from deep. Boulard gathers, steps, beats one defender, gets it away to Bane, Bane. Back into Menage, Menage over the touchline. But how about that for counter attacking rugby? It's what they want to do, isn't it? As soon as they get that half opportunity, such a threat from transition, this French team. Smart play as well, coming inside, realizing there's support play on the inside. It's just a little juggle, but it's deemed forward. 
great from Vernier in the first place as well, just to whip that ball out. Need, she knew that needed speed on that pass to free these outside backs. It's frustrating for Wales though, isn't it? You know, penalty, good few phases of play, get that penalty, opportunity at line out, and then it's just the execution of the line out. And these are the moments they'll talk about at half time, you know, trying to keep their hands on the ball, take the opportunities that are given. Yeah, yeah. Girls, we need a break foot and stability. Yeah. Feet over, uh, under your body. Okay, thank you so much. <laughs> yeah. Closing the gap is the buzz phrase in the Women's Six Nations 2023. France and England are a few steps further up the ladder. Crouch! Wales know that one more point in this competition, they will finish third. Set! For the here and now, they are under extreme pressure. And the referee left with no other choice. And away go France again through Chambon on her own ground. Knocked on by Thakey George, deliberately as well. Punishing, isn't it? it? Is I think Flaky George might be lucky there. Might have had additional numbers outside of that deliberate knock-on potential French opportunity to score a try. And certainly in the form that they've been in in the last 31 minutes. Worrying signs from that scrum there. Very, very worrying. And then, yep. That's the key. From Brousseau and the old Bordeaux front row penalty and Chambon is keen to go strange old climate here in Grenoble it's warm but it's sticky and humid and it's threatening to rain and France are threatening to run away with it again Menage such a brutal presence in midfield to a, the twin sister who plays in the centre both could probably change and switch positions. French forwards carrying now. Now they give it some width. Tremoulier, Brousseau on the shoulder. Tremoulier turned the wrong way there, but the ball is back. Escudero, big collision on George Evans. No, leave him, leave him, leave him. France sniffing for a fourth. Menage. They have Chambon. women out wide, should they wish Bolivar. to use them. Bolivar. Chambon. Big carry. Kafui. Forwards combining. Chambon is there. Big tackle on her from Kate Williams. Now they're queuing up to the left. France looking for a fourth. Penalty given. Chambon waits for nobody, but the referee isn't happy. trying to do anything they can do just to slow this French onslaught down. Nice variation used though in Chambon's just trying to do everything she can to add some energy and some tempo into this game and as those defenders space out, I think it's Fulani just spots a li nice little option to go straight through the ruck so just really keeping these Welsh defenders guessing they're constantly having to scan, constantly having to work on either coming in or spreading out. They're really, really toying with them at the moment. Escudero, middle ball, France will not get there. Not late. Wales look as if they've got their defensive policy in that area of the pitch to stay down, which means that 
Ball in from France has to be on the money, otherwise it just looks really skewed from a referee's perspective. They'll be frustrated, that's two opportunities they've missed in the 22 now from set piece. was destroyed and Shola Harris sensibly gets it up and away and clears the danger thanks to Fionn Lewis but it won't be much of a respite yep, yep. Fionn Lewis booming the anthem is one of the visual and audio sights and pleasures of this year's competition two big tries in both previous six nations campaigns against scotland and given her opportunity ahead of kira bevan tremoulier france scrappy unusually so Kalfui, the tight head menage Picking up some steam. Brousseau okay. met by Kate Williams, but she rode the tackle. Erme, good tackle, Abby Fleming. No advantage. High tackle. Number eight. Shonen Harris, high tackle. Opportunity to see if France go for another line out. That's. I think three now that they've what? unsuccessfully Sorry. used as a, as a platform or as a launch attack. It's unlike them, they'll be frustrated by that, certainly at half time. Going back to Fionn Lewis though, it's, yep. it's working well for Wales that they've got another opportunity as a kicker and another, somebody else that they can use to exit when they get into that 22, you know, Fakey, yep, Fakey George, Eleanor Snowzill, yep. And Fionn Lewis can also get those exit kicks in. Okay. Cecilia Cipolotto. Brief impact. is completed. Kera Sale back on. Her job is to defend this driving mall. Forlani hands it back to Brousseau. Socha, the hooker. Chambon. She's got your ends on her shoulder. For the forwards fancy a bit of the action told to release our Wales approaching half time France completely dominant at the foothill of the Alps round the corner they come options galore but too many of them because they got in each other's way yeah just looking for the old battering ram there really not an awful lot of creativity coming from France in that certain play I think Wales did really well to hold that initial drive again obviously the stuff they've done in defensive mall scenarios had that practice of course against England as well but they do so well in that and then there's a few individuals I've seen Eleanor Snowzel a few times just trying to keep keep in a tackle and all that does is buy your defensive uh, line behind you a little bit more time to reorganize to scan it looks like that's going to be a key part of their game if they're going to keep France out. They just need to buy themselves that little bit of time and tackle. Third in six of the eight World Cups on this French side. And 13 of the last 14 matches against Wales. Just that one defeat in 2016. Fionn Lewis, Snowsill, Williams Morris. Rare opportunity for her to get the ball in his in her hand. Shunan Harris.
anybody's ball here. Boulard claimed it in the end. This is where France are dangerous and Wales are a little bit light on the right hand side. And away they come. Sniffing for a fourth. Vernier. Big collision. Bethan Lewis goes for the spoils. Chambon. Picou. Tremoulier. Banet. Good tackle, good defence. Williams Morrison. Tremoulier is up and away again. Wales having to do so much work defensively. France again, hungry, relentless in the pressure they put on Wales. Thank you. Brousseau met again by Bethan Lewis. What a shift she's putting in defensively. Menage gets it away to Vernier. Vernier with the offload. Your ends stopped somehow, but she gets it down. And the pressure told in the end. The coaching staff depart to the dressing rooms. And France have a bonus point just before half time. Llorenz is second. What a well executed and well finished fourth French try. That was a long time getting down there, wasn't it? It was, she stayed in the fight. Frustration for Wales though, you know, there was a, like, although that scrum was creaking, it gave them a platform for an exit. They'd worked them work their way out of the 22. Unfortunately, it was just right on that borderline, which means the kick can't then go out. So, unfortunately, just not the execution on that box kick, allowing France just to come straight back at them again from one side of the pitch to the other, just opening Wales up defensively. France have been good. Tremoulier has been excellent. She bide her time. And this time, it's unsuccessful. But France are on course for a Grand Slam showdown. They've totally dominated Wales in the half plenty of questions to answer for Johan Cunningham and his coaching team four tries for the French and at half time the score here at the start is out Grenoble is France 29 Wales nil well, to say that it has been a tough start for Wales would be an understatement. Four tries conceded in that first 40 bonus point in the bag. As a team, they have been fantastic, France. Individuals have shown their flair. So what does Johan Cunningham do to stop this French onslaught? They need answers fast. Well, the most important stat for you, the score, 29-0. Possession-wise, it looks quite equal. Territory as well. Conceded penalties, nine for Wales. Tackles made only 40 by Wales. France have made 72. Metres made 420 by France. Eight offloads as well for the French. A tough watch, that one, for any former player, any current player, any fan as well. But let's not take anything away from France. They have come out here to play a statement from them in front of a capacity crowd. Yeah, absolutely. France are, like they say, they are enjoying themselves out there. And unfortunately, Wales are on the back end of that. They just can't get grip of momentum at the moment. So, um, yeah, it'll be interesting to see what, what Johan and Hannah have to say now in the changing room. So, game is always of two halves, right? So, hopefully, they can come out different team get the momentum back and then go forward.
even from the first kick, Philippa, yeah. it was a tough one for Wales. It feels like a step back, possibly. It just feels like they're playing with a little bit of lack of belief. It was a shaky start. We talked about that environment. The girls themselves said, you know, it's one of the most intimidating places to go and play, but you kind of hope that they were prepared for that. But seeing unforced errors like this kicks out on the full from the Eleanor Snowsill that we were talking, you know, about. She's such a fantastic player. And you felt when they were kicking, it, it was under pressure. They were forcing it. Look, the France back three, they're fully set and ready to take that as it was. It was kicked out on the full as well. You know, we talk about the, the possession, the territory, all equal, yet I don't feel like we've actually seen Wales play at all. So the stats are a little bit misleading. You felt, uh, you know, with the scoreline, uh, it wasn't that strong when they played against England mm -hmm. by half time because you felt like you saw so much from Wales. They'd really imposed themselves. They haven't got into this game yet. They've really got to have a stern talk at half time. Yeah, they did need a strong start, but a minute on the clock and the first try conceded. Yeah, absolutely. And as we can tell here, it's they are set, they are numbers on. I think potentially need to be more dominant in the tackle um, to then get into the floor. France are offloading anything and everything, even when there is two tackles around them. So, yeah, really exciting for them to come back out now. Hopefully, Johan and, and Hannah, yeah, have a good word with them. What happens to you as a player out there on the pitch when you go down a score like that so early on? Yeah, it is tough because you know then that when France get momentum, when they're excited, when they're playing in a crowd full of 20,000 people, they are exciting, they do try different things. So, yeah, it is tough. I think each individual who's made a mistake out there needs to, to park it up, go again and, yeah, come out a second half. And from then on, every French player seemed to want to get involved, some fancy footwork from the open side. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, absolutely. They've got threats. We talked about it all over the field. But this was their next try. Now, for me, Jesse Tremulia, yeah, fantastic player. But you've got to put more pressure on her than that. Look how much distance there was between her and the defensive line. Gave her that time to pick out this lovely cross-field kick. Now, it's just a one-on-one -on -one, uh, tackle at the, at the end. You know, Wales, they've got to come up with a little bit more belief. That confidence that we saw against England, getting these players' faces. Because, like you're saying, they're playing with, when French players are playing with a smile on their face, that is when they're at the most threatening. And they could really run away with it in the second half. Things go from bad to worse. The yellow card, Sean Ed Harris, sees 10 minutes in the bin. And you just knew there was going to be another score during this period. Yeah, unfortunately, yeah, Sean Ed did get yellow. But they did do quite well when Sean Ed was off. They did only concede uh, one try. So... Um, yeah, credit to Sean Ed coming back on and, and working hard, but unfortunately, yeah, they're just... It's a great a individual try, isn't it? You'd be proud of this one, wouldn't you? <laughs> I'd be very proud of that one, yeah. Again, just defences not connected and mm. individual brilliance, to be honest, with this one as well. Um, there's only so much you can do against a, a yeah. good attack. Because we saw the French just have so many runners behind every single player. So they're really narrowing the Welsh defence. You can see a cluster of the three players, but they've got that skill set. Then they just put that little loop in and they're getting on the outside edge of the defence. They are dominating, aren't they, France? It is a joy to watch them. It's just unfortunate that it's against Wales. <laughs> For now, thank you very much. Right then, let's get some more reaction. Let's head back to Grenoble because Alex Richardson has um, some company. Thanks, Catherine. Yeah, I'm joined pitch side now by injured Welsh second row Gwen Crab. Gwen, first of all, how are you doing and how is the rehab going? Uh, yeah, it's going quite well. Um, I'm just about nine, ten days away from surgery now, so it's just about you know staying active, trying to keep my my quad and my hamstring and that kind of thing as uh, as activated as possible. Uh, but yeah, then going into surgery and then I'm starting from square one and, and I'm excited to get that underway. How frustrating is it for you having to sit and watch on the sidelines, especially amongst an atmosphere and in a stadium like this? Yeah, it's very frustrating. And I think, you know, the circumstances where I came back from my ankle injury, got re-injured again, like, it makes it even more frustrating because it's been a long time since I've actually tasted a little bit of this atmosphere. Um, but it, I've sort of put that to the back of my mind and I'm here to just support the girls and do everything I can to help them as well. A tough first half. Take us into that change of room. What will Yoan be saying? Yoan be saying to those players at half time? Yeah, it's definitely been a very frustrating first half, and I think the the hardest thing for us is that we're the ones that have caused that for ourselves a lot of the time. Little things like piggyback penalties, discipline, um, and not really capitalising on, on a, the possession that we have had. So I think it'll be sort of. Um, a mindset of frustration going into that change room and I think the girls would be quite disappointed in, the, in their own performance but that's not to say that we can't bounce back out of this now and, and come and, and bring it in the second half. We've got great changes to come off the bench and I'm excited to see what they bring with the energy off the bench as well. Yeah, Tulopi made a great impact when she came off the bench then. Yeah, definitely. She, she's a little superstar. You know, I always love, she's my roomie when I'm in camp and I, I love watching her come out and play. She brings such energy and such, such a good vibe to the squad. So yeah, excited to see what she can do when she comes on again. 
Gwen, thanks very much for your time. No worries, thank you very much. Well, it has been non-stop action from France in that first 40. Breathtaking stuff. Wales have it all to do. They've struggled to get their hands on the ball. Can they do so in the second half? The fans are enjoying themselves. No surprises, really, with that first half score. Right then, highlights from this afternoon's match will be available on Scrum 5 Sunday this evening. Join the team later on. They'll also be analysing Judgment Day yesterday. Two cracking derbies, starting with Dragons against Scarlet. Jordan Williams, Rio Dyer. Oh, what a step by the winger. Back to Jordan Williams. A bit of skill to light up this stadium. Oh, Jordan might have given it a bit early today, but it gives him a one-on-one -on -one with Combia. And boy, does he stand him up. The little one-handed shuffle inside. The Scarlets looking to attack. Ball out. To Pelotu. Hardy. Door open. Within a metre. No, he's there. He's there. The comeback starts now for the Scarlets. Bradley Roberts, ever the bundle of energy. Now they give it with Rio Dyer back in against the grain is Angus O'Brien. No more red! Steph Hills, oh. Steph Hills against his former region. Here he goes. Williams off again and space sorts and the support on his right but he's going to go himself Great Thomas ball. Williams in on the left and here comes Max Llewellyn to slide under the sticks that's a great ball I'm looking to take it here we go off we go with Young and Young has real speed and Grady is with him and Grady will take over from here if the bounce is good there we go for Cardiff And Skirm, oh. it's pinched, and now it's offloaded, and Young's going. away. And Young is going all the way for the Welsh Seals and for Cardiff. Yeah, all the analysis on Scrum 5 later on this evening. Well, this is the final match of the penultimate weekend of the Women's Six Nations. Yesterday, Scotland took on Italy and England travelled to Musgrave Park to take on Ireland. Ball comes away. Still England. They need to stretch this out wide. They've got numbers out there. Packer can tell. Now McDonald. She does give the pass away. Kildun will finish. Well, the clock is starting to count down now to the 80 in Cork as we get to see a breakaway through Talling and it's to Sarah Byrne. She's just running along with Irish players hanging off her. Cabert with a nice pass to Matthew straight under the posts. Conco Roberts, lovely pass for McLaughlin, offloads to Louise McMillan, who's over for the try. Manuzzi, good first touch. Ostuni Manuzzi, weaving her way past purple jerseys. Vittorio Ostuni Manuzzi for the line. Vicchini gets the offload. Vicchini goes under the sticks. Skeldon throws in. Donaldson on it again. And here they go, Scotland. Halted for now. Skeldon has it. The momentum's with them. Skeldon's over for a second try. So this is how the table looks as it stands. England are on maximum points. France also looking good to add to their three wins. Wales still have that all-important third place. Scotland following their first win in 12 Six Nations games go fourth. Italy fifth. Ireland yet to pick up a point. 
Yes, yeah, some great rugby over the weekend. Have to talk about Scotland. That is a big monkey off their back. It has been a long time, hasn't oh, it? Gosh, such a long time. Captain uh, Rachel Malcolm was, was literally in tears at the end of the game because, like you say, it's been almost a year or over a year, actually, since they've had a win and they've been so close mm. within points. So fantastic for them to, to get that monkey off the back and hopefully finish the tournament with a bit of a high. And having seen that England scoreline, I'm just thinking next weekend with 50,000 tickets, more than actually now sold, it's going to be a crack against France for that Grand Slam. Yeah, it's going to be absolutely phenomenal. You always dream of playing in, in front of crowds of 50 plus thousand people, yet playing in your home um, stadium of Twickenham. It's going to be a fantastic occasion. And if France get the win um, today, it's yeah, they're both going to be on for the Grand Slam. Oh, fascinating. Can't wait. Right then, let's go back to France, shall we? Alex is standing by. More company, Alex. Thanks, Catherine. Yeah, this time I'm joined by Rachel Taylor, part of our commentary team out here in Grenoble. Rachel, what are your thoughts on that first half? Yeah, look, um, an incre incredible stadium, incredible atmosphere, but it's really clear and dominant that France have come out, you know, with intent today. I think maybe the way the way Wales played last time out against England, you know, they want to stamp that out straight away, and they've done that. You know, their, the physicality the way they're trying to put tempo into the game. It's really, really testing the Welsh defence. Um, I think it's really difficult for Wales, you know, uh, to handle this pressure, but there's got to be glimpses. There's got to be things that they've got to try and take from this game now from a performance point of view. And can Wales get back into this in the second half? And how do they go about that? I think we heard, didn't we, you know, from the coaching staff earlier that tries are really important. Can they get on the scoreboard? Can they settle their nerves? You know, I've just put my coat on because there's been a dramatic weather change in the last five minutes. So a little bit of rain in the air, a little bit of moisture in the air. It's going to change the way both teams play, but it certainly gives an opportunity for Wales. Thanks, Rachel. I'll let you get back off up to Coventry. Thank you. Thank you. She's going to have to sprint back up there. A few minutes to go. I'll ask you the same question, Philippa. What do Wales do? Well, you know what? On, on one side of it, the coaching management could look at that and say, girls, we haven't seen you in this. It's not like you've thrown everything, done the best you possibly could, and that that's not good enough. So wipe it off. Everyone, up your game, and this is your chance to prove what you can do. You know what that changing room is like better than anybody. Johan, what is he like as a coach? Is somebody shouting, is there? Is Shana having a word quietly with a few players? What's going on? Yeah, Johan's a very calm-natured person anyway, so he's going to go in there. There's not going to be shouting. He's going to then try and bring positivity. There's, there's no point shouting and screaming now. It's let's go, go again, get out in the second half, bring the positivity, and with the possession they do then have, take it, take the opportunities. They've had the same possession as France, so it's what they can do with it now in the second half. They need to get something, don't they, from this second half before a huge match against Italy next weekend. Right then, I wonder, is Rachel Taylor back in commentary? Do you back her? I do, she's still got it. Let's rejoin her and get it. Sadly not, not quite. Uh, she might have been held back by the weather change because there's a storm coming seemingly from the Alps. We're here in Grenoble, the Stade Alps. What a wonderful stadium, 20 yeah. odd thousand here. The noise has been deafening at times. And the mist that's drifting down towards us now yeah. is being carried by a breeze that's seemingly behind Wales. So the restart and the second half should be favorable from a Wales perspective. And they need everything in their favour. Elna Snowsill to restart. Yeah, the win carrying that ball, the extra two or three metres. Chambon, inexperienced at scrum half from Grenoble, has impressed in the first. Courtney Keat, big, powerful runner. Keris Hale took a knock, departed for five, ten minutes from HIA. She's back on. Snowsill, Fleming. Few of the Wales players carrying bumps and bruises, penalty coming. George Evans, top Wales carry in the first half. Snow Silk, thank you, George. Penalty. It's not rolling. It's breezy down there, Rachel. I thought it was breezy down there. It was even worse up here. <laughs> oh, right, OK. Uh, it's favouring Wales. Good, positive start to this second half. And Wales, no. One point in the final two matches. Uh, 
this half and then Italy in Parma next weekend will be enough to give them third place and of course third place arguably was the best they possibly could have hoped for considering the the gulf between Wales and France but also most importantly the top three in this competition will play in the new autumn series the WXV Wales not straight not straight coach killer same as before not straight yeah 100 percent. both teams guilty of it aren't they at line out but whether they've looked at each each other for had four words with the referee around what that might look like and the opportunities it might create but that's incredibly frustrating for wales like you said just getting back into this now opportunity to start the second half in the way they want to they'll be frustrated by that but they can force an exit they can push France into having to kick and try and regain possession as soon as they can. Crouch! Bind! French backline are getting very excited. They've got something planned here. Scrum is solid. Let's see what's happening. Yeah. I thought they might be at Red Bullard. Not the best of passes to your ends, but she has got gas and she is away. Oh, brilliant by your ends. And France are up to the halfway line, and Wales have disrupted the play, Lady, slowed Lady, down Lady, possession. Lady, no. Chambon wants a penalty. She may well get it. George Evans was up flat there. Penalty coming. Tremoulier. Oh, she's done this before. And May back inside the Bane. Bane past Snow Silk, Bane past the second, Sosha, France flying in Grenoble, that's a big carry by Piku as well, from one end of the field to the other, now they give it some width, brilliant, Boulard back inside, what a try, what a score. They attacked from deep. Escudero, the try scorer, but the ambition from underneath their own posts. France have gone the whole way, and they've got another cheer here at the start as well. Brilliant. Absolutely incredible team try. You've got open side flankers, basketball tapping it down to wingers back inside play continues some great hands you've got hookers popping up in channels they shouldn't be plop props play in scrum halves and then again you see blindside flanker in the other 15 meter channels stretching wales's defense from side to side each runner has got an inside support player an outside support player it's just so so hard to defend for wales but let's not take anything away from that french attack that is an incredible team try brilliant superb tremoulier into the wind now. No. So 34 nil Wales. Wonderful handling. Menage combi combining with Escudero. But that was a team try. And now, the Wales players marching back towards the halfway line. Heads are dipped. Snow silk. Tremoulier. Keats beaten by the bounce. Snow silk. Tremoulier. Scampering back, Boulard, Neumann gave chase and Boulard just switched direction, that was just clipped on by Chambon, it was a Wales scrum and offside, which scrum turning into penalty. Yeah, just that kicking game again, isn't it, both trying to move the back three, smart play from Wales, just tries to get that kick bounce over people's heads rather than let allow them to come on and, and take it on the full but 
bit unusual from France, probably a little bit guilty of trying to overplay. I That's a big mistake from Flaky George. Well, Flaky George went for the Hail Mary. She Come missed. Come Coaches often tell the players, yeah. give me the five-yard channel. If you do miss, you do miss. And she has. Your ends, 100 metres for her in three carries today. Two tries. There's efficiency for you. been a lot, a lot of the difference we've seen between these two teams isn't it the, the ability to get the ball out wide early enough for these players to do what they do so well and in terms of execution that is a success rate that she'll be really pleased with okay if the pattern is to be repeated France will go from here Tremulia takes it to the line and she wraps round drops it oh good pick up from Snowsill Wales one quick ball France have slowed it down. More than that, they've got a penalty. And now they fancy going quickly, no? Again, so many red flags from a Welsh defensive point of view. Yeah, there are. They just spoke about it at half time. It just seems that this French team there senses their intent. It's just it's heightened in this atmosphere, and they're just managing to see things that Wales can't see quick enough. They're picking up space, they're, they're hearing all of the comms around the support yep. players that they've got. Wales are just a little bit slow. It's another great pickup from Ellen Snowsell. We saw one of those in the England game as well, just her support players are a little bit slow to come. I wonder if the weather as well is the reason maybe they're trying to keep ball in hand and not kick into this really strong wind. And the rain has dropped down from the hills as well. A little dab kick through, ball almost landed into the breadbasket of Menager, but Neumann got back. Wales have rare possession. Abby Constable, her international debut, Seanad Harris, so often the catalyst when it comes to Wales. Seanad Harris, penalty against France. Yeah, no clear release, just the forwards doing the work there again. Bit of a different change of inside line, just support play off Eleanor Snowsill's inside, just trying to draw those defenders out, forcing a penalty. This time, George finds touch. I think it's worth repeating the weather certainly has changed here in Grenoble. There's a stiff wind that's swirling around the stadium, making it difficult for kickers. The drizzle has arrived. And Carlos Phillips will be fully aware of these conditions right now because they're tricky for kickers and hookers. Yep. George gets it. George accelerates into the tackle. George Evans. She's carried ever so willingly in this game, sometime into big blue brick walls. Seanan Harris, low defensive tackle on her, and she crawls over. Closest Wales have got so far. Fionn Lewis wants Constable to assume responsibility. She's driven back by Brousseau. And now momentum and shape has been lost. So they go up and direct. Still there for Wales. Still stopped by France. The storm is brewing here in Grenoble. And Wales have their best opportunity. Shot at Harris. Still they come. Forwards picking, going. Knocking on the door, Lewis digs, gets it away to Thakey George. Crossing is the scream that echoes around the starters out. But play continues. And Wales are still coming. The wind is relentless here. Conditions are so tricky to play. But Fionn Lewis is patient and 
she demands more from her forwards. Keris Hale, she's within a metre. Another pickup, another drive, another penalty coming. Free play if Fia Lewis wants it. Try. On the line, says the referee. And despite being down by 34 points, there are smiles on the faces of George Evers, the try scorer, and her teammates. Wales finally have a score in Grenoble. There seems to be a bit of a protest from a couple of the French players. Really keen to see that again, I think. I did think Charlotte Harris had made it perhaps one, two, three, four phases earlier, but the work rate from the Welsh pack just to keep going under the guidance of Lewis. The wind is so strong. I think Snowzel really needs somebody to hang on to this ball for her. Well, the cameraman needs to hold on to this camera. You can see the camera shaking here. <laughs> Our notes are flying everywhere. Snow Silk needs support. And it's gratefully accepted, and Wales are up to seven. Changes for France as well. Bernadou on. Gross on as well. What I absolutely love about this French team is that they're still arguing whether or not that was a try, despite being 34 points up. They have got a new hunger about their defence. Absolutely fuming that Wales have crossed their white line. So 53 minutes played, yep, yep. a grand slam showdown is being erected. Twickenham yeah, yeah, yeah. HQ, yeah. 50,000 plus expected there. And if the atmosphere is 50%, 20% of this one, there will be a treat in store. Crouch! And also, if anything, Rachel, a contrast in styles because we are repeating it. France want to play, don't they? They do. You can tell. I'd love to see the stats after just the number of offloads from this French team so far and the amount of times that that first carry is outside of the first receiver, really trying to play with wit. As are Wales here, much better to see them trying to strike early. Sean Harris. One of those players was on a part time contrast, still kept her position as a school teacher. The option is there. Good kick, and the snow so. And Tremulia, yeah, had to come back. Was that knocked on? She's done well, but she gets the ball away. And Wales, with a win behind them, are starting to build something here. George Evans. Oh. And yeah. Back to come. I think certainly <laughs> momentum has changed, but um, the conditions are favourable from a Wales point of view, yeah? Yeah, they are. We can just see out there now just how slippery that ball is getting. The amount of unforced errors that are creeping into the game. But much better from Wales. An opportunity to go wide off first phase just opens up that backfield and a far, far better kick, uh, kick from Eleanor Snowzill, forcing that error. So, four substitutions for Wales. Front row changed completely. Kira Bevan in addition. And if anything, that doesn't weaken the team, no? No, absolutely not. Look, we always knew that this front row would come on at some point during this game, potentially a fraction earlier than we'd planned, but you've seen from that last couple of phases of play just how hard this Welsh pack are moving and how hard they're going to have to carry for the remainder of this game. So having those 
changes now is absolutely massive. Alex Callender coming on as well for Beth and Lewis. Just another opportunity to try and get over the ball in these difficult conditions. Well, for those viewers hoping to watch the FA Cup semi-final between Brighton and Manchester United, that's available over on BBC Two Wales right now. Alex Callender on for Beth and Lewis. It's horrible out there. It's horrible up here. <laughs> That's true. It's a bit dry. True. It's annoying. Right on the near touchline. How will this scrum fare this time? Harris gets it away. Kira Bevan, first contribution. First touch and she's through the gap. Fleming. Wales have a buzz around them. Alex Callender, fresh energy off the bench. Bevan, Sakey George, such a talented ball player. Could play 10 and 12. France competing at the deck. Wales scrambling to keep ball and they've done so through Fleming. Shape has been lost a little bit. Pick and go. Another carry. It's not flashy, but it's low risk. Perse supported by Tupilotto. She's there. Try number two. And it's Gwenthia Perse. Immediate impact off the bench. And when the wind behind them, suddenly there's optimism in the French air. Yeah, exactly that, just playing to the conditions. And as we just mentioned, just those substitutions bringing on just a new lease of energy, a new enthusiasm and a hunger to carry. And that's exactly what you see from this front row, fighting their way to get the ball down over the line. Real sort of attitude change in this last 10 minutes from Wales. And the buzz and the excitement and the atmosphere we've been celebrating here at the Stade des Alpes has evaporated into the French mist. Now they get the enthusiasm. He, he, he seems a little bit more satisfied. Two more tries now for Wales. And they will know that third place is safe and secure. I think it's interesting, isn't it, the, the contrast, if you like, of how they've both teams have managed this storm, if you like, li quite literally. France still trying to move the ball and play that offload game, but forcing errors, whereas Wales playing much tighter game when they get into that 22. Like you said, less less uh, risk of a knock-on, but it's, it, they're getting the reward for it. And it'd be interesting to see if France almost go back to type around how they play, but they've got such a strong wind against them now, they're going to have to run it if they are going to choose to do so. Thank you, George. Who all of a sudden has found a real edge of confidence and she looks such a talented player. And this time she's jogging back and not a big chase from France either. So she's got plenty of time. And she bangs it away up towards the halfway line. And if you want an indication as to the power of the wind and how Thinky George is feeling right now. Voila. Yeah, I'm not sure it's the wind. She's been doing kicks like that all season so far for Gloucester Hartbury in the Allianz Prem. A couple of 50-22s already to her name. So that's the luxury, I guess, not only of having that second ball player and somebody who's comfortable in that 12 jersey to, to step in as first receiver, but just the extra option she gives Wales as a kicking game. Into the final quarter. France was 34 nil up. Still way too early to think of anything other than a French victory. 
And the Grand, sl grand Slam decider okay. in Twickenham next week. But Wales capitalising on this wind, on this breeze, storm that's right behind them. And it suits, if anything, their style, as you touched upon, Rachel. 15 blue, 15 blue. Not conservative, but pragmatic and relatively low risk. Yeah, you know, we'd, we'd be throwing everything at them if they failed to capitalise on the fact they've got this massive strong wind, you know, and it's a really change of conditions. The, the ball has gone very, very greasy. There's lots of knocks on. Right, let's go down pitch side, back to Alexander Richards. Thanks, Gro. I'm joined again by Alicia Butchers. Alicia, a great start to the second half. Two tries on the board. You couldn't wish for better. No, uh, I think it's credit to our coaches and how clear our matches were at half time. And credit to the girls, they caught a fire in the second half. And hopefully, we can continue this progression and get a couple more points on the board. And the weather's taken a considerable turn for the worst in the second half. Do you think that's helped you? Uh, I think it's definitely helped to have a pick and goal game where well tries have come from, but I think that's just credit to the girls and how they physically fronted up in the second half, and I'm just excited to see how they go now for the next 20 minutes. Thanks, Alicia. Thank, Thank you. Williams. Penalty as well. Yeah, it's that front row again, isn't it? That's just the impact that it does. Opportunity to go with a wheel, I thought. Potential opportunity to play advantage there from the referee. It looked as if... Kira Bevan had an opportunity to strike down that blind side, but that's, that'll be a nice, um, great feeling for that front row coming on, knowing that they've got that capability to use that as a weapon now to, to gain that field territory again. No, I, 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 I think the bottom is good enough, the timing is good enough. Please be careful. Yeah, I, I check, I, absolutely. I check more. Uh, at the moment, it's okay. I check more, no problem. Please, you're number one, you loose up, have to stay and push straight, not willing. Thank you so much. Scotland win helped Wales yesterday. They just need that one point to finish third. Sean and Harris, the loose line out, but Harris was fully aware of the opportunity presented to her. Alex Callender, Kelsey Jones alongside her. This is the forwards keeping it tight. George Evans. Arguably Wales' best player this afternoon over the opening 60 minutes. Hannah Jones swallowed by the French defence. Looks like that one for me. I'm not sure if we'll get an opportunity to review it. Harris. Wales getting the most change out of the most simple of stuff. Kelsey Jones, calendar on the shoulder, Menage falling on the wrong side, but ball is back again. George. Evans, so many carries from the Saracens lock. Triple Lotto, good tackle on her. Hermé went low and just sacked her immediately. Another big defensive effort from France, and Wales are losing ball, and this is dangerous. Snow Silk took a time on the floor there. There's no full back back here now, on the left-hand side. Triple or two. Seanan Harris. This game has been turned on its head. Quincy and Pierce. It's France's turn to do the defending. George, wild pass. Williams Morris, good strength by her though. Then she's driven back. Again, there's no full back for France. A chip kick could work. Harris, how much work is she going through? She's knocked it on. I was going to interrupt during that phase of play just to say 
It's really smart from players like Flaky George offering themselves as those direct runners, shorter lines as centers, because it just gives those forwards a split okay. second breather. It's not a lot of time, but it's just enough time to get themselves into shape again. Probably Wales just needs to be a little bit careful on some of these pre-latches before they go into contact. But that, you know, if you can get away with it, it's brilliant. It's working for them, so why would they change? I think it's just options that they're running out of. This French defense is so ferocious in their tackles. Menage is physically just trying to put herself back in this game, trying to turn this tide. And you can see the hunger as soon as they get half line break, they're chasing it. And this crowd is trying to get everything behind them. France have been defending for 15 minutes, but when they stick on the afterburners, they are so lethal. This is Hermé looking for support, finding contact. They are queuing up on the left-hand side if they want to use them. Forwards combining midfield, substitutes doing the hard work. Penalty, though. Kira Bevan, up and away she goes. There's no full-back. Yoren scrambles back, Hannah Jones on her back. She's a danger, though. already has a hat trick. Vernier, highlighted pre match, if anything, has been the quietest of the French pass. Backwards, says the referee. Fleming bundled over the ruck and just making things awkward. Menage. He really is something. Little chip kick. Well read by Snowsill. Wind hammering down here. And the start is out. George Evans. The ever dependable, reliable George Evans. Penalty coming for Wales again. Kira Bevan knows this and just sticks boot to ball knowing there's another penalty coming. It's interesting, isn't it? Just that little bit of energy that Kira Bevan's brought to the game. But Fionn Lewis, very good, trying to get those forwards around the corner and demand more from them. But it's almost like Bevan's just able to see those little different changes. And it's, it's good, it's rattling France, it's rattling this French defence, it's giving them other options, forcing them to turn, trying to speed up the game, but on their terms, rather than having to play at the speed that France wants to play. But it's interesting, I think, weirdly, from a French coaching perspective, they'd probably quite like this moment to go through uh, at this particular part of the game because they know what test they've got coming next week against England, and it's not all going to go their way. And I think this is a, probably a really good opportunity for the coaches to see how they manage in, this, in these conditions, under this amount of pressure. It's a good prep in a kind of weird way to have to say that, but it is with knowing what they've got to come next weekend. A few more changes for France. Thank you. Menager replaced in midfield by Philippon. Wasn't straight. It's worth repeating the fact that Wales yeah. have never won in France. Only scored more than seven once before until today. That was eight, wasn't it? Ten, was it? So, baby steps. Baby steps for Wales. The battle to finish third wasn't said publicly because clearly you don't start a campaign with the ambition of finishing third but turnover ball here penalty here and 
with the context of that. Still 10 minutes left. Two more tries, and third place is in the bag. Yeah, and I think interesting to hear the message from Alicia Butcher's pitch side, you know, the clear messaging from the coaches, is that go out, get us four tries, is, it was, is in within their capability, you know? They seem so, so much more focused. Yes, the game might have gone, but this sudden change of attitude and intent is creating opportunities for them. And that front three of that front row, they are having such a great tournament. Again, somehow, an untidy, messy line. And eventually, initially, lands in red hands, but now France have turned it over. They counter-attack from a similar position. Wind in their faces. Wales competing at the breakdown. Alex Calder told to get out of the way. Uh, not to over-exude herself at the breakdown. She's been a nuisance and Chambon trying to get there. Eventually, Calder for Chambon to pick, to go. I think she might have made a name for herself for the French crowd as well <laughs> during that passage of play. France, oh, nowhere to go there. Sure. No red, no red. And now, horrible place to clear from. Sean Harris right in the thick of things, unsurprisingly. It just needs to be smart here now, Wales. Listen to the referee, don't concede a penalty. The last thing they want to do is give them an easy exit. They know they're forcing this pressure on France. They don't need to do anything unnecessary. This is hard work. For Alexandra Chompon. Plays the rugby here, the side is out. But this is pressure. And she gets the ball away. That's a big win for the Wales pack. Well, the locals aren't too happy. And that is absolutely ferocious work from the Welsh forwards at their breakdown. Alex Callender not easing up for one second. Hands all over her, hairs everywhere. We always see that hair bubble coming out and the the blonde hair all over the place, but every part of that French defence just so hungry to get off the line and really forced pressure on France. Okay. Twenty points between the two teams. Eight minutes left. It was all gloomy at half time. Okay. And then when France went to 34 points, second, second. Okay. Wales fans would have feared the worst. Okay. Oh, hang on. TMO. What's going on here then? By number eight red. Yes, well, the action of 20 blue, that pool number eight, and then number eight, 10. This is Sean Harris. It's that swing of the arm. Rachel. Yeah, you can see the frustration of both players. It just probably doesn't reflect well on Sean Harris because it almost seems as if that fist is closed therefore a, more of a punch in our action so clara yes okay yeah. i mean Yeah, 
reaction. <laughs> okay, I, I know I understand it as a reaction because of you, you will scream calmly, but that is a penalty against against you. Just yeah, that's, yeah. <laughs> that's fine. Shauna <laughs> <laughs> Harris accepted her medicine when she said, you know, it's just a penalty. She's like, yeah, that's fine. She would have been worried there, I think, Richard. Yeah, having picked up a yellow card in the first half, you know, her, her immediate thought would have been gone, like, am I gone, is that a red card? But I think that's probably the right decision, you know, it's it's tough in those breakdown areas, you know, everybody's given a little bit of everything, and you can tell that they're rattling them, but it's just the the fact that it's a swinging arm, she's lucky it's not a closed fist, you know, it's not, it's not anything more severe than that, but you can't show that sort of ill discipline unfortunately and it's a let off for France so is there a final squirt of the cream on the cake France have been pretty lifeless in the second half forced to do some defensive practice ahead of the big Twickenham showdown now Banet Forces the tackle away from Kira Bevan. They want another try here. Suddenly, we are reminded what 20,000 passionate supporters can sound like. And there's been a momentum shift. And that penalty to Shonen Harris certainly was that. Yeah, that French defence taking a huge confidence from holding out Wales there. Just another flex of the muscles, isn't it? Going through the defensive patterns. And it's just the ability to turn this game. The, the options that they have, Bane, I don't know how many times she's just got the ability to beat a defender. And it's not necessarily in space. She's very strong in her upper body. Just got really good balance with the ball. It's a, it's a strong fend and it just puts that Welsh back line on the back foot all over again. But. Yeah, this French team are having a real test in this last moments of this game. To the front they go to Picou. The start is out, is roaring. So sharp. Seanan Harris will be penalised. She's on the yellow card. Menage. Repelled by Alex Callender. Substitutes carrying, picking off Wales defenders. Sosha. They're rumbling on Vernier. This time she stopped. She sh so often isn't. Sosha. She's ever so close. If they go now, France, the try is on because they've got huge numbers on the outside. Chambon knows this. Tremelier. Crossfield kick. Beats everyone. No Penalty no coming. Seven. Yeah, opportunity to play with the advantage, but Sosha for me has been everywhere during this game. She has had some incredible carries. She's popping up in the wider channels. She's just really smart play knows that they were likelihood to keep going down that blind side just holds herself on the open just such a smart rugby player what are we waiting on here Hermé is the player of the match scorer of France's second try it was a cute finish by the former skipper Neumann receiving some treatment a lot of blood there as well what's your take on this match I think a disappointing first half for Wales yes probably the occasion slightly you know gave them that freeze France looked incredibly strong and the way they want to play rugby they will be a force to be reckoned with next weekend for sure at Twickenham but Wales can take massive heart from this second half, the, the hunger and the passion, and I think a lot of it's in that belief. You know, you see the change of the ability to score a try and what that does to them for the next 10, 15 minutes. My only worry is that this has been a hugely physical contact, uh, contest, and I just hope that there's enough 
strength in depth that we've got enough recovery plan for the week because that game against Italy will have a lot on it. And can, we, can France win the Grand Slam? The way they're playing, you know, don't get me wrong, that they'll be disappointed to have conceded 14 points today, having only conceded 15 from the other three games, and England will test them. But they do play some very attractive rugby that England won't have dealt with. France not had everything their way in the second half. But that one is straight into the hands of Gro. Looking to seal the win. It was in the bag by half time. But then they, then they got some defensive practice. Menage is over the line. Can she get the ball down? No, she stopped. Another penalty coming. And ironically, the wind has switched direction, Rachel, and suddenly it's behind France, I think. On the line, Red, on the line. It's just going to follow the team with the most momentum during the game. Yes. She's some player as well, Menage. Yeah, she'll be huge, massive um, player ability in the carry, in the loose. Physically, she's such a specimen of a rugby player. She has everything you need for a number eight and she'll be a massive asset to their game next weekend one last jab from the big french pack encouraged by the Stade de France support, Stade des Alpes supporters, Vernier cutting an angle in her typical fashion. Now they're within a metre. Wales have had to do so much defending in this game, especially for the first 50. Pick and go. Forwards, driving. Forward scoring! That seals it! It's a French win! And it's a Grand Slam showdown in Twickenham next weekend. Watch out the Red Roses! France mean business! And they've got the win here in Grenoble. And it looks like Bernardo, the tight end, will get the credit. Rose Bernardo and France are up to 39 points to 14. Yeah, finally starting to play the conditions, ironically, but that's their strength and depth of their front row as well. Be a really fitting moment. Jesse Trillier can manage to slot this one, but the wind is definitely against her. Her final, final match in her home country. One of the all-time greats. The approach will be as it always is. It will seem effortless. And regardless, to whether or not this goes over, she will get one big cheer. Get over, go on. Oh. Not to be. But she, once again, has just impressed so many of us by her attitude or anything, her calmness. Her ability to make the right call at the right time. So, England next weekend for France, 50,000 plus. Wales in Palmer, knowing that one point will be enough, Rachel. Yeah, and I think they'll take huge credit from this second half performance. Be interested to see how Italy come out of the blocks, you know, having suffered uh, a defeat as well. So, it's going to be all to play for next weekend for Wales and Italy. Touch. 
but Now, plenty of work on, so we will focus on the positive 25 minutes, but much of it will be hard watch for Wales this week, yeah? Yeah, it will be, I think. Probably France's hunger to go wide so early will worry Wales. That's obviously something that they're going to target, whether that's back three positionally, they feel there's an opportunity. You know, Italy might have a look at that as well when they come to analyse Wales. France, one final hit out, looking to go from depth, this time Bane goes nowhere, Abby Fleming took a big hit there, just took a sec to compose herself, Kelsey Jones, good energy off the bench from her, and Calendar and Pearson to a block to King is on as well. Vernier foot over the touch line. Touch. Referee will bring this match to an end. France thoroughly deserved the victory. They led by 34 points to nil. A spirited fight back from Wales, taking full advantage of a change in the conditions, has given the scoreline an air of respectability, but make no mistake about it. The gap is significant. France or England are streets ahead of the rest, but Wales know that they can get a third place in Parma next weekend. Final score here in Grenoble. France 39, Wales 14. Well, France take the win. They were dominant in that first half. And despite a mini comeback from the visitors, Wales leave Grenoble with nothing. France, with all their flair, scored six tries. This a beautifully worked team effort. They go for Grand Slam glory against England next week. So the stats, they tell the story, don't they? 39-14, the final score. Possession, all square. Wales had the better territory. Penalties conceded, 14 for Wales, 9 for France. Metres made, 735 for France, 515 for Wales. So, this is how the table looks. England are on maximum points. France a point behind, so a shootout next weekend for that Grand Slam and title. Wales still have that all-important third place despite this afternoon.